We know this past year has been a little strange. So if you're tired of just hanging around, doing the same old thing, if you're looking for something new, take a trip to a place that has fun stuff for kids to do all summer long. Your library has cool activities and resources ready and waiting in the summer reading program. In fact, they have good stuff for the whole family. All your favorite books and a lot, lot more. Visit your local library's website to get started. Don't worry, there are virtual options too. Interactive games and crafts and activities. Plus, there's free movies, music, and TV shows available online and in person. Come on, take a trip. Whether you go with the group or log on from home, we've got a summer's worth of fun ready for you. So tell your friends and make plans to join us for the summer reading program. This summer, we celebrate animal stories with the theme, Tales and Tales. Check out your local library for more details. See you there. Hello third graders, my name is Katie and I am a children's librarian at the Beverly Public Library. I think that video we just watched was pretty cool. Animals wearing sunglasses, sign me up. Congratulations on almost being done with third grade. You made it! But we should get back to summer reading, which is what we're here to talk about today. In order to complete the summer reading program at the Beverly Public Library, we are asking that you read 12 hours from June 21st to August 13th. That in total equals 720 minutes. There are 525,600 minutes in a year, so I know that you can read for 720. You can read by yourself, be read to, or listen to an audiobook. It all counts. Reading is always reading. There are two ways that you can keep track of your reading minutes. You can get a paper sheet from us at the Beverly Public Library starting on June 21st, or you can use the Beanstack app. Through Beanstack Online, you receive a virtual badge for every 20 minutes of reading. But with the paper log, you get to use stickers. Each sticker represents 20 minutes of reading and you will need 36 stickers out of the 50 on the sheet in order to reach your 720 minute goal and complete the program. Of course, you can always read more. We hope that you'll read for fun, but if you need the extra push, read for the prizes. Everyone who completes 12 hours of reading will receive a very, very, very awesome squirting dragon. <laughs> but you will also be entered into a raffle to win other prizes, like a summer reading t-shirt or a gift card to the bookshop of Beverly Farms. Not sure what books to read? That is where I come in. Our librarians and your teachers have made this big list of awesome books for you, and I have a few extra special book suggestions for you right now. First up, we have Layla and the Bots Happy Paws by Vicki Fang. When a local amuse amusement park is in danger of shutting down, Layla knows just how to bring in the crowds. Build an amusement park, but for dogs. But will cool doggy rides like Rub-A-Dub, Mudslide, and Tummy Rubbing Machine be enough to keep the park open? On Wednesday morning, Layla has a plan. She hands a stack of ideas to each bot. We need to get feedback on our ideas. Let's share them with the dog owners to hear what they think. The dog owners love some ideas. It's perfect. They don't like others. It's too messy. And they make suggestions. It would be better if the balls were flying around. Find out if Layla has success with her dog amusement park. So check out this book. Next up, we have the beautiful This Poem is a Nest by Irene Latham. This book is fabulous. There is one 37-line poem in the book, but then there are over 160 poems nested or kind of put within them. The poems cover nearly everything, emotions, wild animals, natural landmarks all over the world. I think that they hit all seven continents, even planets and constellations. The art is also amazing. 
and there are tips for writing poetry at the end. But I am going to read to you the section about colors. Red, autumn leaves puddle beneath, beneath roof of sky. Orange, imagine a tiger's wild heart. Yellow, honeybees thrum welcome home. Green, nothing more than a forest. Blue, vast sea, a home for everything. Indigo, song of sky and pink. Violet, morning's glittery web coated in wood smoke. Brown, day trills a tune of egg corn nuts and oak bark. White, clouds drop kisses, sail forth wise and worthy. Black, dark splashes, whispers, ancient glimmer song. And it looks like we have a witch. So check out This Poem is a Nest by Irene Latham if you like poetry or you just want to learn how to write. Next up, we have this graphic picture book, which is called Lift and is by Min Lee. Iris loves to push the elevator buttons on her apartment building, but when her little brother starts to push the buttons instead, she is not happy at all. That is, until she finds an old elevator button, which allows her to go on magical adventures away from home, places where she can escape and explore all by herself. But when she's forced to choose between going at it alone or letting her little brother tag along, Iris finds that sharing a discovery with the people you love can be the most wonderful experience of all. And here you can see Iris. When we get back home, I just want to be alone. I wish I could be anywhere but here. And you can see she pushes a button and sees a big light. I wonder what's going to happen, but I can't tell you that. I got to read the book. Next up, we have Doggo and Pupper by Katherine Applegate. Doggo is used to having things be a certain way in his family. He likes routine. Cat says that he's become so boring. That is until Pupper shows up. Pupper is playful and messy, and he turns the house upside down. Soon, the humans realize that Pupper needs some training, and off he goes to puppy school. But when Pupper comes back, he is so well behaved. Is he too well behaved? Read this book to see how Doggo and Pupper learn from each other. Life with Pupper was not boring. It was not humdrum. It was not the same old, same old. Doggo tried to teach Pupper his dogs, but Pupper was goofy. Pupper was messy. Pupper was having an absolute ball. Doggo tried to be a good sport, but Pupper was silly. Pupper was lazy. Pupper was having the time of his life. Again, that's Doggo and Pupper by Katherine Applegate. Our next book up is The Investigators. This goofy graphic novel series by John Patrick Green follows the super spy alligator duo the investigators as they travel through the sewers, sometimes even through toilets, ew, <laughs> and fight the forces of evil. In a world plagued by crime, corruption, and confusion, one organization works in the shadows to right these wrongs, sending its top agents to solve any mysterious mystery. These are our stories. The investigators are on the case. Mango, get off of my case. Oh, sorry, Brash. Our new vests are in this suitcase, along with our next undercover assignment. Is it cowboys? I hope it's cowboys. A mustache? It is cowboys. Hey, partner. I must ask you a question. How do I look? Cowboys in the city? That's absolutely absurd. What? You've never heard of an urban cowboy? Yeehaw! Look, we're not going undercover as cowboys. Bakers? Then this mustache must mean only one thing. Pizza! Cupcakes! What? Mango, how do you get pizza from a mustache? Oh, I don't know. Like every pizza box ever? Well, then I guess you're not familiar with the world-famous cu cupcake chef, Mus Gustavo Mustachio. This book looks pretty great. Check it out. And Investigators is the first in a series, so if you like it, there are plenty to keep reading. I'm willing to bet that some of you like dinosaurs. Was I right? 
The next book by Linda Skears is called The Dinosaur Lady, but it's not about a half lady, half dinosaur like the title may suggest. It's about Mary Anning, the first paleontologist, a person who studies dinosaurs. After finding the head of a creature, Mary set out to find its body, its skeleton. She looked for over a year, combing through dirt, sand, clay, and rock. Boldly, Mary chipped away and uncovered ribs, vertebrae, flippers. Was it a crocodile, a fish, a lizard? None of the above. Mary had discovered a creature never seen before. Was she scared? Nope, not at all. But many villagers were. Soon they were talking about Mary's monster. Word traveled to a rich collector who offered to buy the skeleton. Mary hated to see it go, but the money would help the Anning survive the Anning family survived for months. The collector donated it to a London museum and scientists and geologists flocked to the exhibit. They studied it, calculated, debated. They named it the Ichthyosaurus, which meant fish lizard because the word dinosaur hadn't even been invented yet. Can you believe that? Read on to learn more about Mary Anning and her absolutely amazing discoveries. And our final book today is the absolutely wonderful Lupe Wong Won't Dance, which is a chapter book by Donna Barba Higuera. And it's true. When the book opens up, Guadalupe Wong will not under any circumstances dance. Lupe wants to be the first female pitcher in the major leagues. And she's really good. She's on her way. If Lupe gets an A in all of her classes, her uncle has promised to take her to meet her favorite pitcher, Fuli Hernandez, who is Chinican slash Mexanese, which means Mexican and Chinese, just like her. But it seems like all of her plans might be ruined when gym class is overtaken by her arch nemesis, square dancing. I'm going to read to you a little bit from there. This is when Lupe finds out about square dancing. The TV screen lights up. Men and women are standing in a circle. The men have on jeans and checkered shirts, and the ladies are wearing matching puffy skirts bloated out like a Pinterest cupcake fail. I think I'm going to puke up my lunch. They're paired off, holding hands. The screech of fiddles echoes across the gym. A guy with a southern accent wails in a scratchy twang. If it hadn't been for Cotton Eye Joe, I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? It's like a bizarre hillbilly rap. Arm in arm, the people clomp around like trotting donkeys. Coach Solden taps her foot and claps her hands to the song. She's about a half beat off and her hips are wiggling side to side. It's eerily similar to the time my mom insisted on teaching all of my friends the Macarena at my birthday party. Even though I silently beg the universe to make it end, just like with my mom, Coach is not stopping either. Blake looks at me like he just got lemon juice in his mouth. Zola Fimple covers her eyes. Marcus, our number two pitcher in the rotation behind, behind me, nerves up and makes a gagging noise. How do grown-ups not know how embarrassing they are? Finally, the music stops and Coach bows to an imaginary partner, just like the dancers in the video do to their real partners. She hits stop on the remote. It takes her a few seconds to catch her breath. My mouth and the mouths of everyone in the room drop wide open as Coach's words echo out. Welcome to this quarter's curriculum class. Oh no, square dancing. <laughs> Will Lupe get out of a sticky situation and get to meet Fu Lee? I can't tell you guys that. Read the book to find out. Well, friends, those are all the books that I have planned today. Thank you so much for joining me, third graders. Remember, these books are just suggestions. You can read absolutely any books that seem cool to you. I hope that you'll visit me in the library this summer. I can't wait to see you then. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.